The Hollywood Reporter did a great job in, in uh, uh, this article about this esports lawsuit. And again, you know, we know about it through a lot of uh, venues that we study from. But the main thing is, is what Hollywood Reporter mentions is the following. Did you know the top esports player is Tyler Blevins? Cal, you and I don't follow this very well. Not, so not I much, watch, yeah. And, but I want you to hear this. And, and this is for those people that don't want to, you know, don't really care about this. He's known as Ninja. In December, he told CNN that he brought in $10 million last year. $10 million. He just pulled down a cool $10 million to play video games and let people watch him play video games. It's a millennial's dream. That's better than a poke in the eye with a hot stick. Oh, my gosh. And guess how many views he has on thing? Uh, there's a thing called Twitch, and I actually looked it up this morning, mm -hmm. and I started watching Twitch. Twitch is a like a YouTube channel, a TV channel for video gamers, and you can watch these people play video games live, and while they talk, you can hear what they say. And, and, and I guess there's two reasons. Number one, it's interesting to watch to the kids. Me, it bored me to death. But the second thing is, is it teaches them how to play it. Like, oh, look, he grabbed that gun. It's in this corner so they can learn how to play those games. But he has 450 million views on Twitch. Now, this is not the kid that's bringing the lawsuit. This is like the top player in these esports. And ready for this? He has 20 million subscribers on his YouTube channel. Wow. That's a lot of subscribers. That's a lot of people watching. And and here's the, you know the age range of those. Wait, what happened? There it goes. Oh no, I I am being taken. I'm coming in and out. Oh, what's happening? The age We're range fine. the age range of the uh, of most of the folks that are watching these videos is to the anywhere from eight years old all the way up to eighteen. But most of them are kids. Right. Because it, what, what you said, Fred, is exactly what they're doing. A lot of these are tutorials where somebody plays the video game. So, well, how do I pass level 11 on uh, Call of Duty Black Ops 3? And I want to get in here. And, and the videos on YouTube will be how to pass this thing really quickly, how to, how to upgrade your character so that it has this armor with this guns, and now you're more competitive in the player-on-player -player stuff. And, and that's just an industry over the last 10, 15 years on YouTube that has just skyrocketed, and the ones that got in early are making a ton of money because they're popular. There's a there's an artist named PewDiePie, which is he's probably one of the top YouTubers out there, and he started playing, it wasn't sports games, but he's playing games, and it's the funny commentary, and my kids watch it, and, and I'll tell you, the people are hurting the cable industry because they're losing people watching TV because Kids prefer YouTube, Denise. Well, I was just wondering, how do they monetize this? You know, this is like, for me, I just want to get my head around this kind of money. How do they, how do they monetize it? Well, th th here's, here's, something that, here's something that you mentioned. You know, you said this guy's got like 20 million subscribers right. and he has 450 million views. Well, if, if you're on YouTube, for example, there's different ways that folks make money on YouTube. One way, it's pretty obvious, somebody's watching YouTube and you know those little ads that show up in the banner bar on the bottom. Well, anytime somebody clicks on that, the maker of the video is going to get a portion of the ad revenue that Google generates. So if somebody's paying Google a buck a click for, for ads to show up on this person's video, well, that person's going to get a portion of that dollar that they pay to Google, and Google tracks that. Google also has payments to folks based on number of increments of 1,000 views. So for every 1,000 views, you're going to make this amount of money. So, you know, it's it's cost per view that they pay. Uh, they also have stuff for cost per likes. If, if you have more likes of that, then Google knows that more people are watching yours and the revenue goes up. So there's a lot of stuff that Go I say Google, Google is YouTube, that they make there. Twitch is the same way. Twitch, I mean, it's interesting. Twitch actually is on it can be an app on the Xbox console itself wow. so that when wow. somebody's playing Xbox they activate the Twitch app and now it broadcasts directly from their Xbox console up to the cloud and anybody can watch it and you can comment on it because you got the headset for your Xbox Correct. and the more people that log on to Twitch they share the revenue with the folks that um, that are it's like TV. broadcasting no, it's like TV, the TV. 
So it's, yeah. it's like paying for this kind of influence to get people to look at their um, under underlying program, right? Pre pretty much, but it's also breaking into television. So like on Saturdays, there's the Overwatch League. Overwatch is a game, and, and you can see it. I think it's on ABC on television from whatever time frame it is. You go and you watch two teams compete against each other, and they have a crowd there in the Overwatch arena, and now they're generating revenue like typical television shows through Threats. commercials. And television generates revenue in that same way they when you buy advertising there's a thing called cpm cost per mill in other mm -hmm. words cost per 1000 people so it's it's tabulated in exactly the same way by rating services so really this is just an extension of the way people buy media and it's another venue a very highly targeted demographic venue where they can put their money directly on the backs of people they want to reach demographically so why do we bring all this up we're basing this all on a lawsuit by by Turner Tenney, a 20-year-old man known as Tufu, T-F-U-E, on these esports, and he said that he uh, signed a contract with FaZe Clan. Now, apparently, Todd knows what FaZe Clan is. FaZe Clan is what, Todd? Uh, FaZe, so they have these things out there that are clans that are that are basically the esports equivalent of maybe teams um, things like that that you would have from traditional sports it's just a group of people and they all game and they do things and the clan as a collective will have a youtube channel and then the individuals upload to the clan's youtube channel and then they share in the profits or however things go so he is he signed a contract so that he could do this i mean the idea here is 10 years Years ago, we had mechanisms in place to cover talent agencies for the actor, talent agencies for the pro sports athlete, who gets what if it's reality sports. Well, now we have a new medium here, a new thing called esports, and the fundamental question here is... Where do which, they fit in? Which laws does it fall under? Are these mm -hmm. sports? Does it fall under the need for in the talent agency? And does that have to have representation? Where does this fit? And this guy is complaining. He's he, he's um, a professional gamer, and he is complaining that he's got a three-year contract, that he's signed a three-year contract, and that is oppressive. And it basically does not allow him to do any other type of gaming activities. And he is the split is something ridiculous, like FaZe Clan gets 80%. And he gets 20% of every profit that he makes. Yeah, he also says that FaZe Clan's unlawful activity, uh, that he, this is in April 2018, he signed this, is one, he only gets 20%, you're right, of the revenue. Half of his revenue is from touring appearances. And his Twitch streams have been viewed more than 120 million times. Um, and he has more than, uh, what, 10 million YouTube subscribers. And all that he's bringing basically to them and he's getting a small percentage of it. Now, this was my argument. Let me tell you what I wrote down. As you know, we, as we study, we write little notes, and I write notes. And the first thing I said is, first, it's a three-year deal, buddy. And I'm gonna jump on one side. You guys can jump on the other. And you know what? Too bad. You signed the contract, and uh, and now that they've built you up and you're big time, oh, I want out now. It's like saying, saying I, I bought Apple stock. Oh my gosh. You know, Apple's like, you know what? You got it too cheap. Hey, thanks for helping us out early and get things. And, you know, and uh, we built it up now. But you know what? Here, we'll give you 20% on your money to help you out now because you invested in Apple stock, not the 100 times or whatever Apple stock went up. That's the same thing to me here. It's like you sign the contract. And, yes, some contracts are usury and some contracts you can get out of. But talk about, first of all, it's not like this is a, well, a super long contract. It's three years. And the second thing is – did they help you get where you are? Well, so my response to that would be, first, I, I agree with you to a certain extent. It, I mean, they haven't changed the contract at all. So, so you were, where you were able to review all this, you knew what the split was going to be, the 80-20 split. You knew all of this when you signed it. I would say that this guy Tfue probably had a good following before joining FaZe, because FaZe doesn't usually bring in people that know that have nothing. They want to bring in folks that already have a good, so those followers go up with FaZe. But that's, I mean, you knew what it was when you came in. But it, did it increase? And, and, and if it increased, it did. What I am going to say for this 
this, you know, we have some issues that deal with what services FaZe was set to provide and whether or not they were legally authorized to do that. And when we come back, we'll talk about that because if they weren't authorized, then the contract may not be valid on that basis. Don't go away. You want to hear what we well, have to say. Well, that depends what the contract says. Exactly. But, 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 but we're, and then we're going to go over what's called the talent. Talent Agency Act, Agent, uh, Talent Agency Act is one of their arguments that this should now fall under the Talent Agency Act. These esports, right? A- absolutely. You know, when we first started talking about this a couple minutes ago, we talked about what are these folks that participate in esports? Are they are they actors? Are they athletes? Are they because the designation of the individual is going to determine what side or what sort of license the people that book work for them have to have and. If these folks are talent, like actors who you who have agents, I have an agent because I do acting. My agent has to be licensed with the state of California to engage in procuring work for me for the purpose of artistic endeavors. It's under the Talent Agency, uh, the California Talent Agency Act. That's a requirement. Well, if the people that participate for FaZe are deemed to be talent, falling under that purview, then FaZe Clan, the overall group, who is responsible for booking work, sending them to locations to participate in these things, responsible for how they generate their income, well, they've got to be a licensed talent agency. And if they are not, so if the talent falls under the purview and FaZe Clan is not a licensed talent agency, then the contract that was signed by both sides cannot be performed by FaZe because they don't have the – it's not legal for them to do it. And that affects whether or not there's even a contract, Denise. And that is exactly what um, Tufu – is suing for. He's suing to get the court to make a declaration that the contract is either been breached by FaZe Clan or is void as against public policy or it's anti-competitive or that it because FaZe is not licensed they can't complete the contract. So he's asking for all of that type of relief in a declaratory fashion. So he's not seeking damages so much. There's a little bit of damages in there that he's requesting but it's really the declaratory relief action as to the contract um, and its enforcement. To get me out of the con- to get me out of the contract that's what he's trying to do. So, uh, and you, everybody think, oh, so what? I don't care about this. This is, we're going to follow this. This is something that, yeah, you don't care about now, but this is an up and coming thing. No, no different than the Actors Guild or whatever, yep. because, or, or the NFL or, you know, NBA, because this is, this is the up and coming. The thing that struck me about it, just listening to the numbers you were putting out there, is that the agency gets the 80%. And the talent gets to 20. Usually that number would be reversed, wouldn't it? Well, in a typical agency thing, like with my agent, all my agent does is send me on the audition, gets the job, sends me on the audition, I do the work, I'm doing all the work there, and so I get this. In this case here, it would be it would be akin, for example, to the agent not only procuring the work, but I get out there, and the agent also has control over the medium in which my work is shown, and that's ah. why it's a little different. So like the NFL. Exactly. Right, exactly. Right, right. <laughs> that, that's a good comparison. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying, yeah. That's why it's called eSports, I believe, is because it is more akin to the NFL type of a structure. That's right. 